Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the World Beyond Season 2 Episode 10. As is the norm with all my videos, I won't be holding back on any spoilers, so please do keep that in mind. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. So before I get into this review proper, I just want to say that I won't be discussing the post credit scene in this video. And the reason being is that my thoughts on the post credit scene when I wrote the script, it was longer than the rest of the script. And I don't want this video to be like 40 minutes long. So I will be doing a separate video, which will be up tomorrow about the post credit scene and about how that impacts the Walking Dead universe and my views on it. So if that's all you care about, if you don't care about the rest of the show, then just watch that and close this video and... Uh, I would have wasted my time making this video because now no one's going to watch it. But anyway, you know, don't feel like you have to watch the rest of this video if that's all you care about. But let's talk about the well beyond and the rest of the well beyond for those who uh, will stick around. All 10 of you who will watch the rest of this video. The episode begins with this flashback sequence to two years ago. And it shows the characters back at the campus colony. And it is a bit cringy if I'm honest. You know, the dialogue is very cliche and kind of reminiscent of the dialogue that we had in season one. It's not a great scene, but I didn't mind it because I liked that immediately after this flashback, we didn't have a scene in the present. And it kind of showed how much the characters had progressed since season one. Because in the present, they're taking down the walkers with ease. You know, you can see the difference in age. I mean, they make the characters look younger in the flashback scene. And you can see how different they look and it's kind of like these characters have grown up and I like seeing that contrast. I like seeing how, you know, how innocent they were in the flashback as compared to now where they're just walking around, you know, whacking walkers over the head and killing them. I, I like that. After the intro, the episode then kind of splits into these different branches in which we see different protagonists take on different members of the Civic Republic. So, for example, we see Felix try and find uh, Dr. Bennett, and when he gets to Dr. Bennett, uh, the CR soldiers appear and they open fire. And then Felix says to Dr. Bennett that he's going to take, uh, he's going to flank them, and he believes that this dude, whose name, sorry, I can't remember, he believes that this dude will take the bait and follow Felix because he has it out for him. Because I think in a previous episode, Felix told him that he's going to kill him, and these two, they have some kind of rivalry and yeah they hate each other and what happens is he takes the bait and follows Felix. He gives chase to Felix and then he ends up cornering Felix and the two have a fight and you know the fight was entertaining. I liked watching it but it did definitely have its fair share of problems. I mean the first thing that annoyed me is that this dude has Felix you know in the corner and this dude has a gun full of ammo and he could just shoot Felix then and there and kill him but instead he does you know the typical cliche villain thing of gloating and talking too much rather than just kidding the protagonist. And then what happens is that some walkers sneak up on him, and then he, he then has to shoot the walkers, and he then runs out of bullets, which means the two then have to have a fist fight. Uh, well, fist fight, a sword fight. But he could have just killed him anyway. So yeah, that, that kind of pissed me off. I'll admit I did like that when this dude ran out of ammo, Felix, you know, cleverly cut the door, cut the padlock to the door that was behind him, and then hid behind the door, so it released all these walkers on the dude. I think that was pretty clever. Kind of reminded me of... um. Andrea back on, uh, was it season three of The Walking Dead when she hid behind a door and let the walkers come towards the governor. So yeah, I, I thought that was, uh, you know, quick thinking on Felix's part. I did like that. Anyway, the CR dude manages to fight most of the walkers off and uh, what happens is that Felix then has to come out of hiding. He has to come out behind the door and then we get these two having a, a bladed weapon fight and I mean, it's like something out of Star Wars. I mean, Felix even has like a double... A double-bladed weapon like his bloody Darth Mole. I mean, the fight scene itself is bloody dumb. There's no, there's no doubt about that. It's such a dumb scene seeing these two, you know, seeing them do these moves with their, their bladed weapons. But I'll admit, I did like, you know, I did like the way it was choreographed. I did like the fact that, um, you know, Felix had to do, like, crowd control. So one, he's fighting the guy and then he notices that walkers are sneaking up on him and he's doing these moves where he's kind of, you know, swinging his blade behind him, taking out walkers and then fighting in front of him. It, it looks good. It looks good even if it was really stupid, but it was entertaining. Anyway, to cut a long story short, Felix gets the upper hand and kills this dude. We then go to the culling facility where we see Jadis and Huck partake in another sword fight, except this sword fight is a lot worse than the, uh, the Felix one, partly because of the fact that Jadis initially doesn't even have a weapon, and Huck hands her a weapon. What are you doing? Why are you letting her have a chance? It's bizarre, really, because Jadis is defenseless in that instance, and Huck gives her a weapon, and then what happens is that Jadis ends up killing her, so, uh, yeah, Huck definitely made the wrong decision there. Although I found the fight to be a bit lacking, I did enjoy the dialogue between these two during their encounter. You know, Huck mentions that she can't believe that Jadis was compliant with what the CR were doing, with them killing, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, but then Jadis, um says that, well, you didn't have a, an entire community die, you don't know what it's like, you, you don't understand, and, you know, I like that. I like the fact that Jadis is still scarred by what happened to the junkyard people in The Walking Dead, you know. I like the fact that she's still 
can't get over what Simon did to her people. And, you know, that is what's motivating her to, to work at the CR and, you know, to build a better future. And yeah, I can understand that. I, I like where she's coming from. You know, I, I like that this season, a lot of Jadis's motivations have been explained. We've seen that explained. We've seen, you know, it, it explained also why the junkyard people behaved the way they did, why, why they had their own language. And I think she's been really well written on this show. I'm pretty sure that Huck also mentions Rick during this encounter. I mean, she doesn't explicitly say Rick, but she does say to him, I know you traded someone valuable to get into the Civic Republic or something like that. So again, that's a nice little, uh, you know, throwback and a nice little uh, Easter egg for fans of The Walking Dead. Even though I did see Huck's death come in because I just thought it was so obvious that, you know, she's there on her own. She told her husband and Silas to leave her and it was obvious that she was, you know, intending to die and that she, well, that she was always going to die anyway. Uh, even though I did see it come in, I have to admit I was sad when she died. I didn't want Huck to die. I think she's been great this season. That's kind of a testament to how well written she's also been this season because I couldn't stand her in season one. I thought her entire motivations were absolute nonsense. I hated her being this mole. I hated the fact that the Civic Republic would go to all the trouble to, you know, have her infiltrate, uh, you know, the group and infiltrate Hope's group just to convince Hope to join them when they could have just taken her anyway. It seemed like absolute nonsense. But yeah, this season she's been really well written. She's been really sympathetic. I felt bad for her. I felt, you know, sorry for her. Uh, she's been, you know, stuck between a rock and a hard place for much this season. And I was sad to see her die. We didn't have some action scenes of the kids. Well, young adults now, aren't they? And they're fighting off walkers. And they're visibly tired because they're fighting for walkers. They've been at it for hours. And you see, you know, they're all there, they're like breathing, they're labored, and they're just like thinking to themselves, oh, how long do we have to keep doing this for? And I like that. That was that was a nice little touch. And, uh, you know, just when it looks like there's going to be another wave of walkers that they have to deal with, Indira arrives in her truck, and uh, well, a Civic Republic truck, and she just mows them all down. Unfortunately, Elton still manages to get bit by a walker coming up behind him, but he does survive. He gets his arm chopped off. He's bit on the arm, he gets it chopped off, and he survives. And um, in fact, all the kids survive in this episode all of them make it to the end of the show i'm glad that silas and elton made it to the end because i like their characters i've grown to like them this season but as for hope and iris i really couldn't give a shit if, if they lived or died i mean even though i'm glad that you know a couple of them made it to the end part of me was still hoping for like this rogue one ending where everyone died you know i really wanted a scene of the kids like trying to stand their ground fighting back against the civic republic and the civic republic just wiped them out you know, I really wanted Jadis to be there with her troops and she just orders them to fire at them and they kill them all because I think that would have really illustrated just how strong the CRR. are. CRR. It would, have, it would have illustrated how strong the Civic Republic are because, okay, yes, I know they've wiped out colonies, but they always use, you know, their special gas, their bioweapon, whatever it is, to wipe people out. But when it comes to them being on the ground and being actual soldiers, they're fucking terrible. They're like stormtroopers. You've got characters like Silas taking them out who has really had no experience with guns and he's taking out the, the soldiers and... You know, I think that's what the show needed. It needed something to really show how much of a threat these characters are because, you know, as it stands at the end of the episode, the Civic Republic is still around and I'm guessing they're going to be the big bad in, you know, the Rick Grimes movies and maybe other different Walking Dead spin-offs or media that they do in the future. The Civic Republic are going to be there as this antagonistic group, but I don't really feel that they're a threat. I mean, yes, they have their special weapons, but, you know, when it comes to, to fighting them... They're, they're terrible so i would have liked to see something like that anyway maybe that will change in the future because at the end of the episode the cr recruits silas to be a soldier and uh, yeah jadis recruits him to be her special project which uh, sounds a bit creepy but anyway yeah they recruit him and i think that silas has probably had the most depressing character arc in the entire story because you know he has this background of having this abusive father then all the characters abandon him because they think he killed um oh, what's the dude percy's uncle they think he killed percy's uncle but he didn't actually kill percy's uncle then he gets shipped off to you know this culling facility on his own and then he finally meets a character there who is actually like a father figure to him the father figure dies and i'll get to that in a moment and now he's on his own being trained to be a you know a civic republic soldier so yeah his, his story arc is fucking depressing he definitely drew the short straw and it feels like you know we're watching a kind of uh, a villain origin story if you will with him because he's gone through so much shit i mean i'd be amazed if he comes out of you know civic republic training still being a, a good guy still you know still having his morals intact because i think he's going to be like a mini jadis he's going to just be fucked up in the head and uh who, who can blame him after what he's been through? As I said a moment ago, Silas's father figure, Dennis, he also ends up dying this episode. And Dennis and Silas are in this building. I can't remember exactly what they're doing there. I don't know if it's just a meeting point they're supposed to go to, but they're in this building and the CR surround the building. And then Dennis says to uh, Silas, kill me, shoot me, 
and tell the CR that it was all my idea. I kidnapped you, I forced you against your will to do all this, this was nothing to do with you, and you know, maybe they might let you live. And in all likelihood, Dennis was going to die anyway, because the wound that he suffered a couple of episodes ago, that was still bleeding, and he also realised that Huck was dead because she was supposed to meet them there, and she hadn't come, and he realised then that, oh, she went on a suicide mission, that's why she sent them two away. And he probably wanted to die anyway, you know, seeing as his wife, his wife had died. But even, you know, even knowing that, it was still a sad death, because I think that Dennis is one of the best things to come from this season. I really liked him. I think his relationship with Silas was really sweet. I like that Dennis was the father figure that Silas never had. And yeah, I just thought their relationship was really sweet and genuine, and it was sad to see him die. The next we see of Silas, he's in a room with Jadis, and Jadis is questioning him as to what happened, and... You know, he gives her the whole bullshit story. Oh, he, he kidnapped me and, you know, I shot him because I, I love the Civic Republic and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Jadis isn't an idiot. She knows it's bullshit. She knows he's lying. But she says to him, the most important thing is that you did it. You know, you had the guts to pull the trigger, you know, and uh, I admire that. And then she wants him to be a soldier and recruits him, which I found a bit odd because, you know, this guy had been planning and, you know, had been rebelling against the Civic Republic all season. So it's a bit strange to be like, yeah, I'm going to hire this guy to, to work for me. I don't know, I just thought it was a bit odd. It's kind of like, you know, when Negan, instead of killing the characters, he's just like, yeah, no, you, you tried to kill my, well, some of my men, so now I like you, come join me. You know, it's, it's just kind of bizarre. I thought that was a bit, yeah, a bit strange, to be honest. I think Jadis is playing with fire here, and it might come back to Burner. But then again, you know, like I said earlier, it may be that this is Silas's transition into a villain, and, you know, he, he may be loyal to Jadis in the CR in the future. Who knows? Before the episode ends, Jadis completely screws over Elizabeth by having her arrested. And the reason she does so is that because of Huck being Elizabeth's daughter and because Huck rebelled against the CR, Jadis sees uh, Elizabeth as an easy target. She sees her as an easy target to take the fall. Oh, your daughter was involved in this, so surely, you know, how did you not know about this? Are you a... Uh, are you planning against us as well? You know, kind of like that. So she she knows that she will take the fall for it, or they, they will make her take the fall for it. And in doing so, you know, Jadis will be praised for, for arresting her, and, uh, you know, Jadis herself might be able to climb up the ladder again and get into an even higher position. And I like that. I like how evil Jadis is, how cunning she is, you know, how, how she plans everything. She's always one step ahead this season. I think she's great. You know, I think if she was in the show from the start, it would have been a lot better. And uh, who would have thought that this annoying trash lady who I absolutely hated in The Walking Dead would come on this show and, and be fantastic. I mean, she's a fantastic villain and I'm looking forward to seeing more of her. The episode ends with the scientists all working in their new lab and Elton then does this voiceover and, you know, we cut to different characters and it shows them what they're doing. So, you know, Elton's exploring, going out in the world. Felix and, uh, is it Will? Is that his partner's name? You know, they're in bed, they've got a dog, you know, they're a happy family. Yeah, and it's a nice little cutesy ending. I mean, it ends again with like a clip of them opening the door to the outside world that takes you back to the first season. It's a nice little ending, but I did kind of feel like the episode ended at the halfway point. You know, I didn't expect the scientists just to run away from the CR and that'd be it. And then to find a new home and be like, right, that's it. Job done. We've escaped. I don't know. I was expecting the CR to, you know, track them down to the ends of the earth. I was expecting them to get to this new place and then the CR to, to know they're there and it to be a big battle. You know, it, it did kind of end, kind of feel like things ended really quickly. And a cynic in me thinks it ended quickly because it feels like they're holding back a bit. It feels like we're going to find out what happens to Silas in uh, being a CR soldier. Maybe we'll find out in future projects. We'll find out what happens to Jadis in, in the Rick movies. You know, it kind of did feel a bit a bit unfinished, you know, a bit like, right, yeah, we've, uh, we can't really give this a complete ending in case these characters come back again in the future, which is a bit irritating in my opinion. I did like this episode, but it does feel, you know, for a, a show finale, it does feel like there are a lot of unanswered questions because we still don't know where Rick is. We still don't know who this General Beale is, who the characters keep referring to. And yeah, I don't know, it kind of feels like the show ended just as it was getting momentum. You know, I can't believe I'm saying this because, you know, I hated the first season and I was saying that I don't think this show should have another season. It's terrible. But this show could have done with a season three, in my opinion, because things were just getting going. Things were just getting interesting. I was taking a liking to the characters and now it's it's ended, which is a bit sad. Despite its flaws, I like this episode. I like the second season of the show. It's much improved than the first season. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I am going to miss some of these characters, which... Uh... Yeah, you know, you wouldn't have thought I'd ever say that considering how much I detested the first season of the show. But I think it's been a vast improvement. You know, like I've said in previous videos, I don't, this show isn't going to win any awards for the best, you know, best writing of a show. You know, it's it's not anything amazing, but it's watchable. It's better than Fear the Walking Dead anyway by miles. And um, overall, I enjoyed it. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. 
What did you think about this episode? What do you think about season two as a whole? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know. And uh, I'll see you very soon. Take care. Goodbye.